introducing the Winans, a brilliant genius masterpiece album. Period. This album came out in 1981 on Light Records, which is something that no longer exists, but was a powerful record label. I would say that was probably like the Motown of gospel music. That label is responsible for the Hawkins family, Walter Hawkins, Edwin, Andre Crouch, which interesting enough, I did not know Andre Crouch had a lot to do with the arrangements and as far as this album is concerned, as far as the rhythm and the vocals go. And whoa, another mind blowing thing. I'm like, really, this is the first time I'm actually like taking the time to read the, the back of this, but yo, he actually had, a, Andre Crouch actually has mixing credit as well. So to know Andre Crouch's range and in, in certain aspects, especially the technical aspect of the music is like, that's really mind blowing, like, wow. But Introducing the Winings is one of my favorite albums of all time. One of the things that I, that I appreciate about this record is that it really strays away from like the traditional gospel like you know the traditional gospel in the sense of like that negro spiritual feel and by no means there's nothing wrong with that but it was that gospel that really raised an eyebrow with a lot of those good old church folks that you know thought stuff like james brown sly stone uh maybe even stevie wonder were secular or the devil's music but when you had people like walter hawkins and the hawkins family coming in and bringing that oakland funk which you know come on sly and the family stone graham central station larry graham you taking that funk and putting it into the church you're gonna get stuff like Love Alive, Love Alive 2, that the Hawkins family out live album that they did in 1980, like you're gonna get that real gritty, nasty funk and just still the type of gospel that still stirs your soul and just moves you in the right place. And when I hear the whining's introduction to the world on this record i could really tell they had like marvin marvin wines and and the brothers they had to be some huge stevie wonder heads i don't know if they had restrictions growing up but if they did and they had to be sneaking in records in the house I could imagine they had to be sneaking in songs in the key of life, inner visions, past pops and mom's, you know, uh, trajectory, <laughs> so to speak, you know, to build their musical knowledge. Now let's get into my highlights on this project here. Obviously, I cannot bring up I cannot talk about this album here and not bring up the question is. I mean, probably one of the greatest openers on a record, period. Not just in gospel, but in music, hands down. The first 19 seconds is exactly what I imagine when we get to the gates of heaven. I imagine it sounds just like this. Interesting enough, I, I don't know if that's 
Marvin or it might be Tom Keen, but like these chords here, I mean, like you can't tell me that's not some Stevie. Like, you can't tell me that's not Stevie all day. Them chords is just nasty work. But the song is just really simple. And I don't mean that in, uh, in, in you know, just to really sum it up, really. It, it's like the message of it, just that belief in God and not questioning God's existence and his and, and having the belief in him just you know the response the no no the no 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 yes like just knowing that God will never leave you knowing that God is always there you know and that reassurance that you know that he's there that feeling you the trust and I just feel like Marvin and the wine. I'm getting goosebumps even just talking about it. I really love that song, man, because it really speaks to the conviction for God, the most high, and just that faith. And the vocal work, I mean, even on this song, the harmonies, the layers, but even just the live performances, I'ma just run through it just real quick. Now for a hell he just hear how cold this is. Nah, you ain't hear that. I love, I love just listening to different performances just to still hear that same feel because I believe this is like a later performance but just even in the earlier performance that they did in the 80s for time just flavors still hit the same hold on why he hit that I that Man, that's crazy. Even the crowd felt that. I felt that. I got goosebumps and I watched this joint like at least a million times. Yeah, man, that's like hands down one of the greatest gospel songs ever. And then another one, another highlight for me is self. I'm gonna be real, like just going back to what I was talking about, just changing the game of gospel. Self is like, that's earth, wind, and fire all day long. I hope that I really hope listen if you watch if anybody's watching this and you know Marvin Winans you know any of the brothers you know that's still here God rest the soul of Ronald Wyan, Winans uh, please send this video to them because I'm really curious to know if they were really like listening to cats like Stevie and Earth, Wind & Fire because I believe the falsetto is 
carbon linings and that's Philip Bailey all day. I I know it for a fact. I'm willing to bet any amount of money that they were going for Earth, Wind and Fire all day on this joint. Cause that them guitar licks is definitely something sounds like something that which funny enough came off of like like when you hear Let Me Talk off of the Faces album that came out in 1980 by Earth, Wind and Fire. These guitar licks is very similar to what you hear on that joint. <laughs> Because uh, there's three people that play guitars on that album. David Williams, Hallie Hawkinsmith, I could be saying that wrong, Will Keane. Whoever that is, killing them like that, they was in a bag for sure. But music aside, I mean, you know, the lyrics, going inside yourself, cleaning up. And, 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 and losing the ego and just simply being about God. It is the messages on it on this album is just straightforward. It's just all the way real. Just displaying that conviction for God and and talking about him and, and talking about his grace and his presence in, in our lives, man. And and this is another special one as well. And then I gotta say, man, like goodness, mercy, and grace is another one as well. Another song that talks about, you know, God, but the protection of God. I wouldn't say fearful or afraid, but you know what's going on around you, you know. You know, the, going to the corner store, going to a place that might be rough, but you know, even though you're going to walk to that spot and there's danger, you know that God is with you and you don't have nothing to fear at all. And the energy that Michael and Marvin Wine is bringing to that song, just vocally, even like something like this. Like you hear how those vocals just weave. The way they just weave in and out of vocals on this track needs to be talked about in universities because this right here. Even another example like this here. Hold on, man. Hold up. Hold up. Like, I could see why Marvin and Anita Baker work so well because you could hear just that Detroit husk sucking your stomach and sing from the chest type of soul vibe in the vocals, man. Just that's that. Real talk, man. Marvin Wines is one of the greatest singers ever, for real. Like, one of the greatest, for real. But that's all I have to say about this incredible masterpiece here. Honestly, man, like, this album got me through an interesting period in my life. 
uh, when I was living in Illinois for some time. Like between this album and a lot of Walter Hawkins records as well, you know, I would listen to these records driving in snow, literally. And that was the first time I ever drove in snow. And I really prayed and leaned on these songs to get me through those drives and just get me through that time period. And I gotta send a big shout out to Brian Brooks. There's only one review besides this one that's on this album. And I saw that and I took the time to watch all 10 minutes of that man's video. And he really breaks it down, especially from, you know, somebody who was around back then to pick it up when it first came out, man. I just have to send my love and flowers to him. I hope you all is well with him. And thank you for giving me the inspiration to do this um, video as well. Uh, I plan on probably becoming one of the, the, the biggest YouTube channels to talk about gospel on on this uh, platform but um even if that isn't the case I just love talking about music and I just love talking about really powerful beautiful music like the whinings and I will continue to talk about other stuff as well so that is all I have to say for now let me know what you think of this album if you've heard this album, let's talk about it. If you never heard this album, but you come across this video and you say, you know what? I need to check out what Isaiah is talking about. Because if he says that it's a great record, why not? What the hey? But you know what? When you do, let's talk about it. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much if you made it this far. So much love to you. God bless you. And peace.